Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to a brand new video. And today we've got another tactic. And today it is going to be the long awaited Carlo Ancelotti 4 3 3. It's a tactic I've been meaning to make for quite a while. He's a very, very good manager. So I don't know how I've not made it already. But let's get into the tactic and see where we go. So. Carlo Ancelotti, I'm pretty sure we all know who this manager is. Obviously, one of the best managers in the modern game. A manager who doesn't always have the most positive approach to a football match. Obviously, very defensively solid. But as you could see in the Champions League final, obviously, last year, quite not negative necessary, but quite defensive until they found the perfect chance and then they do punish the team that they play. Obviously, this guy has been at several, several clubs. The clubs that we're going to be testing with today are going to be three of his former clubs. Well, his current club and two of his former clubs. It's going to be, obviously, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, and also Chelsea. So this guy has been at a lot, a lot of top clubs. And what a manager this guy has become. But let's get into the first save, which is going to be testing with Real Madrid. So we tested with Real Madrid, and the results were actually really good. Now, obviously, the teams that we are testing with today are quite good teams, very good teams. But I do like to test with teams that the manager has managed if I am making a manager sort of remake. But with Real Madrid, we actually managed to win the Spanish League, which obviously a bit of competition from Barcelona there. I'm just going to be Karim Benzema coming in with 31 goals with the highest match rating as well. Tony Cruz contributing and Vincius Jr. with the most assists with nine assists each. Um, the Champions League wasn't as positive, getting knocked out in the, in the first knockout round by Manchester United. Obviously, a team that are sort of on the up. A lot of hype about them at the moment. Um, new manager, new sort of system, new players. But I did think we'd do slightly better in that, considering, you know, how dominant Real Madrid usually are in the Champions League. We did go on and win the Copa del Rey, though, which, again, to be fair, is a tough trophy to win alongside of winning the league and also considering on the Super Copper. So it was a treble winning season. In the Copa del Rey, again, we had Benzema coming in with three goals, being the top goal scorer in that tournament. As, um, Tony Cruz and Adrian Hazard contributing with two assists. Tony Cruz coming in with a highest match rate in there as well, with 7.75. Going over to the Super Copper, um, we've got actually Asenjo coming in with two goals there. Ferlan Mendy coming in with a 7.6 match rating, ranking him the highest average. And it's going to be Valverde actually with one assist. So not too much outrageous stats in that tournament. But overall, a treble winning season and a very, very successful test with his current side. And if we go over to the data hub, we'll look at the basics as we always like to do on this channel. And that is going to be team attacking. And we're going to have 2.58 goals a game. Expected of 2.4 again. Pass completion again, very high. Nearly 90% within this system, which again is very, very impressive. Team defending. Under a goal a game by quite a bit, 0.53, expected and conceded, so the reality meets the expectations. And also the tackle win ratio, again, reasonably high, nearly 80%. So overall, quite a successful season, I would say, in terms of what we've won, in terms of stats, in terms of everything. So a very successful season. But let's hop over to the next tactic, which is called Next Tactic Test, sorry, which is going to be with Bayer Munich. Before we do get into the Bayern Munich test though guys, if you do enjoy my tactic videos on this channel, please do leave a like on this video and please do subscribe and turn on notifications. It's completely free, it helps the channel grow and we're absolutely killing it at the moment. I really do appreciate the support, so I'm going to give you three seconds to like the video right now. Thank you. Let's get in to the Bayern Munich tactic test. So, we then go over to Bayern Munich, obviously one of his former clubs. And that is going to be a very successful season again. Again, quite a poor display in the Champions League. So we'll just lock that one right out the park. But with actually Bayern Munich, we won the... I mean, it was quite obvious. I feel like this is the most obvious out of the three teams if we were going to win the division. So we actually win by a total of 26 points. So an absolute thumping in that division. Sadio Mane scoring 28 goals. Leroy Sane and Joshua Kimmich joint assists with 16 assists each. Um, Sane actually dropping an 8.11, which is a very, very high match rating. In terms of Champions League, as I said, knocked out in quarterfinal. Sane having one hell of a tournament in that as well. 12 goals, 8.54, a ridiculous match rating, and 7 assists. We then go on to the Pockel, obviously one of the German Cups you can win. Again, Leroy Sane lighting it up. Um, We're talking 6 goals, um, a 9 match rating on average, which is absolutely ridiculous and six assists. So Leroy Sane really being the star man of this save. And the DFL Super Cup, again, another German trophy that you guys can win if you do decide to play in that division. Only the one goal sort of split between Nabry, um, Sane and Mane. Highest match rating coming from um, Sadio Mane. Obviously, the Super Cup is pretty much one of them. So it's not a pre-season type of thing, but, you know, it's not, it's not as important. It probably goes... 
the league. Then, obviously, in my opinion, the most important would be the Champions League, the league, the Pockle, the Super Cup. So it's not the most important, but again, another trophy. Going in terms of the data hub, then. 3.79 goals a game, which is one of the highest I've actually, I think, might be the highest I've ever recorded in a game. And that might be purely down to the team I was. Um, but this, this system, although it is a very cautious style, because, you know, Ancelotti does play quite a passive type, type of way, you will get goals of it. And what I've found is when you get the first goal, obviously teams go more attacking, then that's when you really, really dominate and get more and more goals. So 3.79 compared to the expected 3.15. Pass completion actually sitting at over 90% this time, 90.42. So very, very high in terms of that stat there. Team defending, very, very impressive as well. 0.44 conceded compared to the 0.45 expected. Tackle win ratio sitting at over 80 this time, 81.71. So very defensively solid, amazing when it comes to the attack. And to be honest, going off purely these two sets of stats, you're looking at what seems to be quite a flawless tactic. We then tested with the last team, which is going to be with Chelsea. And I want to show you this screen here because then I can show you the goals and all these type of stats as well. So we actually managed to win the quadruple with Chelsea. Um, we managed to win the Premier League, win the Champions League, win the Super Cup and the Carabao Cup. So a treble winning season. Not the best performance in the FA Cup there at all. 109 goals ranking us the best and only 21 conceded ranking us the best in that category as well. So also quite a discipline system as well, ranking us the best with yellow cards and actually getting zero red cards, which is very, very impressive. In terms of actual squad stats, which is all the squad arm sort of statistics, that is going to be team attacking 2.87. So a little bit less than what we saw at Real Madrid, but obviously uh, by Munich, sorry, but obviously this division is a lot harder. There's a lot more defensively solid teams in this division, but still 2.87 compared to the expected 2.5. Pass completions in at nearly 90% again, 89.24. In terms of defending, we're going to be looking at 0.55 conceded, 0.6 expected. Tackle win ratio is slightly lower in this division. Um, I don't know what, what actually causes that, whether that is down to the fact there might be slightly better quality. So maybe the you know, players will make a slightly more errors in terms of making clean challenges, something like that. But still, if you look at the stats in terms of defending, the goals that we can see compared to what we score are ridiculous. The gap is incredible. So this tactic really is a good one, guys. It took a long time to make, and I do highly recommend you try it out. Obviously, you can always find these tactics completely free in the description below. But um, an absolutely sensational tactic so far. And the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to pick out a game from this save here. Or I might do the Bayern Munich save. We'll do this save because it's the last one we're on. I'm going to pick out a game. I'm going to go into an actual game, look at the 2D analysis, and really break it down for you guys. So, this is going to be how it lines up in game. So, you're going to have your 4-3-3, quite a basic system, pretty much used by a lot of managers still to date, obviously. So, you're going to have your 4 at the back, and you're going to have your 3 in midfield. Typically, you're going to have your 1 deeper midfield player, which is going to be Kante on this occasion. You're then going to have Pulisic on the right, and you're also going to have Sterling on the left, and up top, we're going to have Kai Havertz. Now, with this system... You're going to typically find that you're going to have your two midfield players sort of do drop back to sort of build up the attack and play. So you have a couple players that do drop back, get the ball from the back four, and then they do sort of build up the play. Um, traditionally, a lot of Real Madrid's fullbacks might not get classed as, you know, the most attacking fullbacks you'll ever see, but they do get forward quite a bit, um, as we've seen recently, especially with the players such as like Ferlan Mendy, for example. Obviously, Ancelotti isn't really known for being the most expressive manager, so that's probably why a lot of the teams don't get the sort of same hype going forward as a lot of other sides. But to be honest, they do play really good attack and football when they want to, and it is a good mixture of short passing. So as you can see, the pass completion was really, really good when we actually looked at the stats, but... It's not always about the short pass. So if there is a player that does get in behind, you know, that is why there's always, there seems to be typically it would be the likes of um like a Cruz would always not push forward as much. It'd sort of be like, you know, almost like a deep line playmaker. It doesn't have to be that role in particular, but it'd almost be a little bit deeper because then if there is a good run, he can pluck that ball out. And that is why it's so important to have a player in that midfield that has got a good passing range because it's not all about the short passing in the system. Like I said, um, Real Madrid can play really good tiki-taka football. They can, but it's not necessarily something they're known for, especially with Ancelotti. I feel like with Ancelotti, they're more known for being being that sort of deadly team probably on the counter. If you look at like the Champions League final, as I mentioned earlier, they weren't really that sort of, you know, 
I'm not saying on the front foot because they weren't exactly getting battered, but they don't know the most expressive team right from kickoff is what I'm trying to say. So they will sort of soak up pressure and then they will counter and then it drains the life out of the team. But what I'm trying to say is when they when they're a goal up, for example, so like perfect example, I'm recording this just after last night when I believe they beat Celtic 3-0. When they were 2-0 up, partnering for the third goal, if you watch the third goal they scored right live in the game or just watch it on YouTube, watch the highlights, that will be a perfect explanation of what I mean here. The passing they can do is really, really demoralizing for the other team. When they're a couple goals up, they can hold the ball so well. You've got to imagine, I am purely talking about Real Madrid side here, but you imagine who they've got in midfield. Obviously, you know, it's absolutely ridiculous. Now, you can replicate this in Football Manager with this tactic with your own side. So it is a very, very good tactic to use to control games when you're a goal up. It really is. But let's watch some goals. There's six goals in this game against Villarreal. So we've got a bit to get through, but let's have a little look at them and see exactly what we're on about. So first goal comes in. One thing I'm going to say right off the bat, in case this does end up being in, this, this system is not shy of getting the ball into the box. It really is not shy. It's not predominantly thump the ball into the box, but if there's an option, whether that be a striker, whether that be an overlap and run coming in from obviously Pulisic here, they will find him. That's all I'm going to say. So we've got Havertz down the line. Is he going to whip it? He is going to whip it all the way back into Mason Mount, actually, who gets himself into the box again. Something you will see in this system. There will be a midfielder, possibly two, that will find themselves in the box. In fact, there might actually be Kovacic there, who actually was in the box as well. And this is what we want to see. You always want that one midfield player that doesn't push into the box, because that's what I was on about when you always have that one player that does stay back to pluck out the long passes or to stop counter attacks at the end of the day. We then go again with Raheem Sterling down this left-hand side. Looks for another ball in the box. It's going to be Pulisic who cuts it back. It is actually going to be Kante who does push in here. So the deepest midfielder is actually going to be Kovacic. So they did push up a little higher than what I did expect there, to be honest with you. But statistically and traditionally, you will see in this system, if you were to watch your games, eight out of 10 times, there will always be a player who's slightly more deeper than the rest out of their midfield three. We then win the ball back there from Kante. Pulisic gets the ball in into Kai Havertz, who goes. Raheem Sterling gets the rebound. So a very well worked, very well worked goal. Sorry, down that right hand side, and it's just unfortunate that Lopez obviously gives us the tap in, and Raheem Sterling runs off with the celebration. So we don't have Sterling winning the back on this left hand side here. Goes all the way out with it, looks to cut it back. He does into Kovacic again. You're going to have your two midfield players in the box here. Kovacic and Mount, and then you've got Kante, who's just a little bit deeper than the rest of them. Kovacic actually hits that one hell of a strike on there. Another thing, again, we don't in particular tell the midfield players to shoot, but we don't also restrict it, so you will see a lot of good long shots being attempted if you've got the players to do so. What I would say now is, if you guys haven't got the midfield players of this calibre, say you're playing with a smaller side, Possibly don't let your midfield players shoot as often by instructing them to, because obviously if you've not got the great if you've not got great shooting on your midfield players, you might see a lot of chances being wasted. Anyway, carrying on. So it's going to be them trying to play out. Again, we're going to be seeing the press from the right back position. Reese James picking up there into Pulisic. A beautiful ball over the top into Kai Havertz, which did actually make it 5-0. And the last goal, I remember this one, is going to be a set piece from Mount. You know, bit of unluckiness coming in from them. But that, that last goal there is very good to see because that is what I mean by it's not always going to be the sweet short passing. That does happen, especially in the build-up quite a lot. And when you're controlling games, that's when you really see the possession side come in. But when there is a ball over the top, which there was there, we will play it. And that's the great thing about this system, I think. Because it's not you're not overly focused on playing that short type of passing, such as like a Pep Guardiola does. Um, you will get a variety of different options you can play, and it, it accumulates in a lot, a lot of goals. I mean, a six goals this game against quite a strong Spanish side, so a very good system. And what I'm going to do now for you guys is we're going to go into the tactic, talk a little bit more about it, and give it a full breakdown. Before we do break down the tactic, though, guys, please do leave a like on this video. The tactics are always completely free to download, so it does mean a lot when you guys interact with the content. If you guys do enjoy my content enough, then please do subscribe to the channel as well and turn on notifications. This is a completely free way of supporting the channel, but it does help the channel more than you can even imagine. It helps the videos get found. just helps me out a lot when you do subscribe to the channel. And I am working through every single recommendation of tactics. That is why there's going to be another two to three tactics coming this week as well. Some are pre-made, but there's such a big list of recommendations that I'll get through. So if you have got any more you want, then please do comment them below and I will try and get them out to you guys as soon as possible. So this is going to be the tactic then. It is obviously going to be your pretty traditional 4-3-3, just with a little bit of a twist. Now, we are going to go over this side of things first. So 
we're going to go with a positive mentality because although it's it's a bit of a weird one with this system because i feel like the way that it's set out in terms of what the player roles are told to do in terms of the actual style of the game what we do all in cross here if you go too negative then you will never actually get any out of it at all so having it on positive is completely fine and it does work really really well in possession we are actually going to be selected to attack and whip to wide pass into space play out of defense selected slightly shorter with the passing directness because again we don't want it like this because it would be too short it would be too ticky tacker based but we want it like this because it is a perfect balance and really does replicate how he plays the tempo again isn't it's not a high tempo guys at all they're quite calm on the ball they don't really chase the ball too much as, as well they're reasonably you know it's really good this in the terms of it's not too demanding on the players which is why you see a lot of the players still cope with it so like your modric's your cruisers Quite old players still are able to play a whole game because it's not too too demanding to be honest time wasting sometimes because let's be honest a lot of spanish teams do like the occasional little bit of time wasting fake injury here and there final third you want mixed cross there's nothing selected at all for any of this at all not needed in transition you want the counter press and also counter you want nothing selected on this area nothing selected here and take short goal kicks um Again, because they don't, they're don't, they not traditionally playing out from the back, so that's why I don't tell them to distribute purely to the defence. I just I let them take short goal kicks, so chances are it probably will end up into the, mid, um, into the defenders, but it could also end up to this player here, obviously the defensive midfielder. Out of possession, we want him on, or we want them, sorry, on the force opposition outside, standard defensive line, and a high line of engagement. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution is a must get stuck in because again these players do occasionally like to take the odd tactical foul here and there me saying that though you did also see us not pick up too many bookings this season so very impressive in that terms of stuff as well in terms of things now we're going to go over to the player roles and this is where it gets really really in depth with what you got to do because there's a variety of positions on the pitch and they all play a crucial part so the first one you guys want to be doing is obviously going to be the goalkeeper. Now, this guy isn't a sweeper by any means. He's very defensive, not very, you know, sort of, you know, you rarely see Courtois come out of his box. You rarely see him make anything too risky, to be honest with you. So it's going to be the goalkeeper on the defend duty with shorter passing selected. You want your fullbacks to be both on automatic. The right back is going to be on the support role, meaning he does do a little bit of both, but he isn't going to be too attacking because obviously this is quite a defensively solid formation what it's meant to be um so you don't want him getting i don't in particularly tell him to get further forward because they do kind of anyway on the support duty and when i had that on it really did not look anything like an ancelotti system because the fullbacks were constantly bombing up the pitch so all you need is trigger press on balanced and shorter passing exactly the same moving over to the left hand side you want him on balance and also shorter passing exactly the same but i thought i'd show you anyway you then want two central defenders again not traditionally having any ball playing defenders in the real madrid team central defender you want the defend duty selected and again very basic balanced on the trigger press and also shorter passing and over to the right hand side exactly the same role exactly the same pretty much it is in these the same instructions i don't know why i'll show you two but i just like to show you everything in case you think i missed anything but balanced on the trigger press and also pass and directness selected to shorter now if you're wondering why this back four hasn't got anything to in particular about it it's because there's nothing nothing really needed like the fullbacks aren't always attacking so that's why it's not they're not told to get further forward because i don't want to cross that line of you know them being confused between going forward occasionally and going forward all the time so the back four is quite strict to be honest in terms of what they can do the freedom they have but you still score lots of goals and what you what you do with doing this is you maintain that defensive ability um because you've got quite attacking midfield players as well obviously if you look at the midfield there's not one of these that are purely on defense so even the dm's on support the center mids on support the metzala's on attack both of the wingers are on attack as well. Obviously, the false line is on support, but that doesn't mean it's going to come back and defend all the time. So that is why the back four need to be so strict. They need to have a little, you need to really pull the reins in on that back four. In terms of the midfield player, then, so the first player is going to be a DM on the support duty. And he is going to be told simply to hold position, balance on the press, and shorter pass. And this guy is the anchor. He is literally the glue. He cements that back four. 
he protects them. Again, he does also link up the midfield play as well, and this is the player that will play the balls up to the wingers when they do start overlapping, or possibly a fullback does decide to go up the pitch. So he plays a very vital role in this team, but, um, but definitely the most offensive midfielder we have in this side. We then go over to the left-hand side of the midfield. Obviously, this is going to be your three. The centre mid on the support duty here, and this guy gets told to mark tighter, trigger press on much more often because... You know, it is very good to win that ball back in the midfield. And Parson is going to be on standard. As you can see, nothing's really special about this role because the Real Madrid, the Real Madrid middle three are so important that and but they're so disciplined as well. So it's like I don't want to have, tell them to dribble more and they get caught out of position. I don't want them to roam because I want them to hold that mid that mid three is really important. I want them to stay in that position. And that's a big reason why i think that mid that mid three works so well because they're all on the same page you haven't got players roaming off here and there especially with these two going over to the mezzala which is by far the most attacking player and this guy has got a little bit of license to roam because obviously he's almost like our attacking midfield player in many senses trigger press is going to be on more often mark tighter get further forward stay wider obviously that automatically because he's on attack move into channels and run from position will be selected and standard on the pass and directness. Again, this guy is going to be the guy who has got a lot of freedom in that midfield. And it's completely fine because you've got two midfield players here. One player being the DM who is pretty much rarely going to get forward as much as the other two. You've got one midfield player, which is going to be the center mid who will actually get into the box, but also will defend. And you've got one player who does have the license to roam, which is obviously what is needed in a team. You then also have the left hand side and the right hand side different roles so we're going to talk about the right hand side first which is going to be an inverted winger on the attack duty now this guy is told to balanced on the press get further forward and cut inside with the ball standard with the pass and directness now we don't tell him to shoot more often and we don't tell him to take more risks purely because even with these instructions, him getting further forward and cutting inside with the ball, he has enough shots anyway. As you can see, like when we were with Bayern Munich, this is a perfect example. Leroy Sane, obviously not playing up front. He got top, well, he got pretty much, he got so many goals in loads of competitions. So your wingers are going to be a main source of goals as well. Also with your striker. Um, sometimes you will see your wingers get more goals than your strikers, as we did see in the Bayern save. Because Benzema, or whoever your striker is in your save, is a false line. So he will get goals. But he is also there to support the wingers because, as you've seen in real life, such a good relationship between Vincius and Benzema at the moment, really helping each other out with goals. It works really well to have a, a front three that is non-selfish and works together. You then have, on the left-hand side, you have an inside forward. It's slightly different. And this guy, again, you're actually going to have him on get further forward, balanced on the trigger press, standards on the pass on directness and cut inside with the ball this one is going to be dribble more and take more risks this guy is definitely the more tricky one of the two um this is where Leroy Sane was playing so this is where a lot of the goals did come from so my, my recommendation would be to definitely if you're playing with a top team then you're going to have one anyway but if you're not playing with a top team make sure you've got quite a tricky and quick player on the left hand side especially ideally with a good end product but if you haven't then obviously you've got to work what you've got but this tactic is suitable for small teams as well just because I've tested up the three big teams that's purely because it's who the manager has managed in the past but this this tactic like i said is very good with small teams as well because especially if you go a goal up because it is so good at holding that lead that's the key thing about this they're so good at maintaining the lead because you can really start you know the time wasting comes in the possession it's really good to see and the last position is going to be a false nine on the support duty he is told to shoot more often because again we do want our strikers scoring goals and not scared to shoot Moving to channels is selected, trigger press is on much more often, and standard with a pass and directness. But no, this guy, this tactic, guys, is a really good one. It really is, and I do recommend you test it out whether you're with a small team or a big team. That is going to be it for me today, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this Ancelotti tactic remake. I know I had a lot of fun making it. If you guys do enjoy it, please do leave a like on this video. Please do comment on what manager you want to see next. I have got a big list of suggestions, but keep that list coming, boys. Keep that list coming. And please do subscribe to the channel. It's completely free. And it helps the channel grow immensely. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.